Are you a woman in the middle? You're in the right place. I'm Susie Rosenstein, and you are listening to the Women in the Middle podcast, episode number six. Imagine loving your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, thanks so much for joining me for this week's episode, which is all about your underwear. Yes, underwear. We're going to talk about how what's going on in your underwear drawer can give you some insight into what's going on in your mind about the importance of self-care, why it may be a problem for you, and what you can do about it. So ladies, what is going on with your ugly underwear and the whole midlife thing? Seriously, women in the middle have a problem and we're going deep to sort it out. Really deep. That's right. So buckle up, you and your beautiful behind and your not so beautiful panties are on the hot seat. As a woman in the middle, I have a strong feeling that you can relate to this. I think I have a pretty good idea about what's going on in your head and in your dresser drawer. In fact, I wrote a blog about this same topic last year called Three Reasons to Ditch Your Bad Underwear, and the response to it was so immediate and so huge that I knew I needed to talk about it here in my podcast. It got more comments than any other blog I'd ever written. So girlfriends, here we go. Be honest. Do you wear underwear that you know should really be thrown out? You know in your heart of hearts if the answer is yes. I don't need to dig. I don't need to pry. I know that you know if the answer is yes. In fact, you might be wearing a pair right now. I remember having nice underwear back in the day. (laughs) It was never that fancy, and I never had a lot of it. But I remember having some particularly nice underwear and a lot of pairs that were comfortable, but nothing special. Function over form, that's my motto. But somewhere along the line, the balance in my underwear drawer changed. For me, I think I can pinpoint it. I've been thinking about it. As you can imagine, if I was going to talk about it, I wanted to really think about what happened and when it happened. And I think I can pinpoint it to a change sometime after my last maternity leave, which would have been in my late 30s. So going by that rough calculation, things haven't been good in underwear land for about 15 years or so. Now, let's start out with a baseline definition of bad underwear. When I say bad, I don't just mean ugly. I don't even mean the ones that cause panty lines. I'm talking about worn out, saggy, shot. Underwear that's no longer doing its job at a high performance level. Quite frankly, these pooped out panties suck. (laughs) Yet, somehow they remain in my drawer. And I think they're in your drawer too. So... Please be clear that when I say pooped out panties like I just did, I'm not talking about pooped in panties. You know what I mean. Every once in a while, there's an accident. In my family, there are some well-known accidents that we joke about and make fun of each other about, like all the time. So, but, you know, it happens. Every once in a while, there's an accident. We all know that pooped in panties have a leg up because If they're actually pooped in panties, they are so much easier to throw away. I think we would all agree that anything disgusting gets thrown out. I'm also not talking about period panties. These are the specific panties kept for that special time of the month just in case there's an accident. No, I am talking about underwear that you know should be thrown out, but for some odd reason, you make a specific decision to keep them on purpose. I'm talking about a much grayer zone. They are pooped out as in worn out. Maybe they're baggy. Maybe they're stretched out. They might even have a small hole or a tear or some weird elastic popping out. But the bottom line is they're no longer doing the job. Yet somehow 
they remain in your drawer and next to your skin. Now, I remember something that my wise friend Carolyn used to say about underwear. Her rule was that when you buy a new pair, you have to throw out an old pair, in with something new, out with something old. Do you subscribe to this system? It's her law of underwear. And I think it's an amazing thing to go by, but I've noticed that I hesitate to embrace it with any kind of gusto or commitment. I've known about this law for years, and I struggle. This hesitation is caused by a thought. Thoughts create feelings, and feelings cause behavior. What thought might be creating a hesitation to throw out a bad pair of skivvies? Well, I don't know about you, but I always catch myself thinking something like this. It could still be used, or maybe I could wear them in a pinch. Like, I don't know what I think is going to happen, that every last pair of underwear in this house would be missing and I would have to resort to such a thing in my drawer. But this thought makes me feel resourceful and not wasteful, which creates my behavior to hesitate and then decide to keep them. And it's pretty weird because if something else in the house was broken, like a coffee pot, I had a coffee pot break recently, it had a crack. I would just throw it out, and I did just throw it out. The coffee pot can no longer do its job properly, so it goes out. But with underwear, it's not quite as clear cut. You can still wear a bad pair. It doesn't really matter if they're functioning lower than normal. Technically, you can still wear them. You can still put them on. Technically, they still create a barrier between your skin and your clothes. I also notice that there are so many easy opportunities to make the assessment and decide to throw out the bad ones. First, you pull them out of your drawer. You could notice how bad they are then and ditch, but you usually put them on. Then you wear them. You may notice they're bad at any point of the day because they probably don't feel that great. Or you may notice them when you go to the bathroom and you actually see them. Then, at night, when you take them off, there's another chance to drop them straight into the garbage rather than putting them in the hamper or the laundry chute. I have one of those chutes. Away it goes. But what typically happens is they go into the wash. (laughs) Then you do the wash. You see them again. And when you take them out of the dryer, you could pop them into the garbage can. You probably have a garbage in the laundry room, but you probably don't. So now they're in a laundry basket in your room. You see them again when you put them away in the drawer where they are welcomed back by your other bad underwear. And so it continues. I think this is kind of crazy. The way I look at it, you actually have about five opportunities to notice and assess a single pair of bad underwear and get rid of them every single time. But you wear them and you don't. And then, by the way, I've noticed the same hesitation about bad bras, but we're not going to go there right now, but just make a little note that I think it's the same thing going on with the bad bras. So I'm not bringing all of this up to chastise you or to make you feel bad, but I actually know there's nothing I can do to make you feel bad that it's your thoughts that would make you feel bad. But I am bringing this up because I think it says a lot about what's going on up there in your brain. What about you? Is your drawer stuffed with less than satisfactory undies? What's going on here? Why do we hang on to underwear when it no longer serves us? Here are some ideas. Is it that you don't like to waste and think that you can still get some use out of them? Or that you're just too cheap to go shopping for something like this? Or you're simply too busy to go out and replace them? Maybe you're overwhelmed about where to go to buy good undies. Maybe it's that we just can't throw things out. I mean, that's a whole thing with clutter. Maybe that's it. Or is it something else, something like the idea that you just don't care about yourself anymore? Or maybe you're more comfortable putting everyone and everything else first, way ahead of you and your bum. Now, Some of you know I'm in Toronto, and in Canada we say bum. Translation, butt. (laughs) It's your butt. Is it that you're just too cheap to spend money on underwear? Is that it? 
or perhaps you don't feel the need to impress anyone anymore. I would like to suggest that keeping bad underwear around is very much like keeping other things around that don't serve us in any way, shape, or form, like thoughts. Think about what happens when you open your drawer and pull out a pair of the bad ones. You see the underwear in your hand. You know they aren't a great pair. No control, saggy, ugly. Does this pair of underwear help your clothes look good? I doubt it. How do you feel? Does putting on this pair of underwear make you feel good, proud, confident, or strong? I'm sure the answer is no. Yet, there they sit. Elastic waist shot, threads and lycra popping out all over the place. And guys, I am guilty as charged. It's just not logical. Why would you knowingly keep this bad underwear around when it doesn't look good or make you feel good? As I alluded to earlier, thoughts create feelings, even about your underwear. The bad underwear doesn't feel good, and you don't feel good when you wear the bad underwear. I noticed that I have some thoughts about what it means to have bad underwear, and also some thoughts about having really nice underwear. They all relate to the idea that nice underwear is an indulgence and that it's not good to indulge myself with things like this. That nice underwear isn't a worthy priority. Wow. When I first started to do this work was, I think it was a year or two ago when I started thinking about this topic as a blog. And I couldn't believe it. Like, as I've talked to you guys about, it's important to do something called a thought download where you just get at, write everything down, just let a free flow, a brain dump of what's going on. And when you really start to dig in to thoughts about underwear, you find out some things going on up there that might be a bit of a surprise. I couldn't believe that I had this idea that nice underwear isn't a priority because the next thought that goes with it is that I'm not worth underwear being a priority, that it's better to spend on the kids. Can you relate to that thought? Ugh, I just, not that it's bad to spend on the kids, but to spend on the kids instead of spending on decent underwear. Now, I'm not talking about when your expenses are super high and maybe you've got kids in university or maybe you're making a decision to do a renovation or like instead of something else. I'm not talking about that. As women in the middle, a lot of times this represents a time in our life where where we have a little bit more wiggle room financially and time-wise. So when that thought came up for me, I squirmed. And I wonder if it's a relevant thought for you. This thought actually feels worse than my bad underwear, (laughs) that I'm not a worthy priority and that it's better to spend money on the kids. What about you? When you see yourself putting on a bad pair of underwear, what goes through your mind? Do you even notice? Do you even notice that you're pulling it out, it's icky, and you're putting it on? I got some insight recently from two young 21-year-old women who are friends with one of my sons. As you may remember, I have three boys, or more accurately, three young men. They're 18 to 22 years old. And I have to say that raising boys, I'm not getting any inside underwear scoop from any of them at any age. I took the liberty of going on a bit of a reconnaissance mission with the girls. I asked them about their underwear situation, and they confirmed one of my suspicions. They said that practicality and aesthetics have merged in the underwear world. Branding is fun, they told me. It's something that girls talk about all the time. They started having this conversation about how underwear became a topic even back in grade four, grade five, that talking about shopping for underwear, what kind of underwear you're wearing, the whole thing is a topic in the world of girls. Now, I come from a family of five girls, but I forgot this or it wasn't relevant or times were different back then. I don't know. But the whole branding being a critical part of the whole underwear thing It was a bit of a surprise, and she said it so eloquently that practicality and aesthetics have merged. So interesting, right? Big change from our youth. And when I think about undies, I think of practical underwear and pretty underwear. 
And as a woman in the middle, you may think about it this way too. Because like I said, when we grew up, there were distinctly different kinds of underwear. I think she's right. Both of the girls, actually. It's a whole different ballgame today. But how would I know? I get my highly functional underwear at Walmart. And these adorable girls are not buying panties at Walmart. They confirmed this. So one reason that may affect the midlife underwear phenomenon is a lack of awareness about this shift in underwear options over the last decade or two, when we've been too busy and too exhausting raising kids and managing busy family life to even notice, right? Or even care. But even with this bit of insight, I would like you to really think about why you wear bad underwear. Really pause and think about what goes through your mind when you put them on, knowing full well they don't make you feel good or look good. Girlfriends in the middle, I would like to suggest that one reason just may be your unfamiliarity with a solid self-care routine or self-care way of thinking. I found a quote by Dr. Lori Buchanan that I loved. It's the definition of self-care. And she says, self-care is a deliberate choice to gift yourself with people, places, things, events, and opportunities that recharge your personal battery and promote whole health, body, mind, and spirit. Did you catch that? A deliberate choice to gift these things to yourself to make you feel good, to help you perform well, to help you be the best you can be. So interesting, right? Buying and wearing decent underwear can be a baby step for you to practice more self-care. Who knows what else you'll be able to accomplish after you get used to thinking that you deserve a decent pair of panties. As women in the middle, we're all pretty good at making excuses not to put ourselves first. In other words, excelling at ways to put yourself last. I even had one reader of my blog from after that underwear post. She told me that she would actually go into the mall and walk into Victoria's Secret to purchase nice underwear for her daughter but would never even think of spending that way on herself. Her underwear sucked, but she didn't have any trouble at all spending a bit more on nice undies for her daughter. I couldn't believe it when she shared that. So ladies, what is going on with you when it comes to taking care of yourself? Are you wearing bad underwear? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you eating the foods you want to eat? Are you the weight you want to be? Are you moving your body the way you want? Are you spending time with your family and friends with intention? Are you taking time to relax? Are you doing the things in your life that you really want to do and actually enjoying them? It may sound a bit crazy, but when I really do think, when it comes to self-care, a great place to start is in your underwear drawer. <laughs> we'll be talking more about self-care in the future episodes. But for now, let's get going. Here are three amazing reasons to ditch your bad underwear. First, it feels bad inside. Wearing bad underwear is a sign that you're probably thinking something that isn't serving you, something negative about yourself. As you know, thoughts create feelings. When you think thoughts like this, your feelings won't serve you either. So, it's about pressing the pause button and figuring out the thought that you're thinking. When you notice the underwear is bad, what is the actual thought that you think that allows that bad pair to get worn and go back into the drawer? Notice how that thought makes you feel. Then notice what this feeling makes you do. Ask yourself, do you like the result? This result will prove your thought. And if you don't like your result, you will need to change your thinking. It's that simple. For example, let's say you notice yourself putting on a bad pair. You remember this podcast and decide to pause and take a closer look. You ask yourself why you've decided to wear worn out gross underwear, unfit for your beautiful body. You notice a few thoughts. Remember, when you understand what you're thinking, remind yourself that thoughts create feelings. How does your thought make you feel? This is a great place to start, understanding that your thoughts are creating your feelings, even about underwear. 
So here are some examples from my clients. Perhaps one of these will resonate with you. Here's a thought. My body's not beautiful, so who cares about underwear? How does that make you feel? My guess is down, unworthy. Here's another one. I don't know where to shop to replace them. When you think that, maybe you feel overwhelmed or confused. What about this one? Nice underwear is a waste of money. This thought might make you feel unworthy, and you might also think that you shouldn't spend money on yourself this way. Now, ask yourself why you've chosen to think this particular thought. Don't just accept it as a fact. That's the thing. Once you start to have awareness, you can't just accept your thoughts. You got to think, hmm, why am I thinking this? What am I making it mean? You have a choice. You have a choice what to think. And when you see firsthand how your thinking makes you feel, you don't have to settle for this reality. If you don't like what you see going on inside your brain, you can also remind yourself that thoughts are optional and you can decide on purpose to think something else. This new thought will, of course, lead to new results. Okay, so that's the first reason to ditch your bad underwear, because it feels bad inside. The second reason is because it feels bad outside. When your underwear sucks, it is a distraction all day. You know this. You're keenly aware that you're wearing a bad pair. You feel it. You're distracted by it. You might be picking at it. <laughs> you're riching around. It's just not good. And it doesn't help you look your best. Why choose this? Ask yourself if you want to look your best. Ask yourself that. And then ask yourself why. Why do you want to look your best? Or why have you decided not to care? What do you make looking your best mean? If you don't yet believe that wearing nice underwear is worth it, try thinking a thought like this. I'm open to the idea that wearing nice underwear is good for me. This tiny shift in your thinking will take you in a new direction. Remember to be open and try to be fascinated with yourself rather than judgmental and critical. Are you the kind of woman who would actively choose not to look and feel your best? More importantly, is this the woman you want to be? Okay, the third reason. Here's the third reason to ditch your pathetic panties. Because it's a small gesture that you care about yourself. When you put on nice underwear, it acts as a physical reminder to you that you're worth it. You can practice thinking this fabulous new thought every day. First thing in the morning, while you're naked, reaching into that underwear drawer. Thinking thoughts like these might be a good fit for you. Give this a try. I'm learning to be more comfortable with spending money on nice underwear. Or something like this. I'm open to the idea that it's worth it for me to spend on decent panties because I'm worth it. Or as a woman in the middle, maybe this one will work for you. It's finally my time to learn more about self-care. So why not start with my undies? So ladies, are you with me? Out with the saggy, pathetic panties and in with the new fabulous under things. I'm not even talking about lingerie, though. I'm just talking about underwear. I want you to have a drawer full of nice drawers, if you know what I mean. As women in the middle, you deserve it. We all deserve it. You've spent the last couple of decades worrying about and putting everyone else first, pretty much living in a chaotic blur. Last few decades, chaotic blur. And this is one small step for your panties and one giant step for you loving yourself a little more, a little better. So on that note, I have a little challenge for you. How many pairs of bad underwear can you throw out? And how many pairs can we, as women in the middle, collectively throw out? I would love to hear about your progress, and I'm going to announce it in a future podcast. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to go straight to your underwear drawer and take a good look at what's going on in there. I want you to separate out the good ones from the bad ones. Now, this first swipe is easy. It's not going to be difficult for you. You know exactly which ones are good and which ones are questionable. So put the nice ones aside. Then take a look at the not so nice pile. And I want you to divide this pile into two. The first half is this. Oh my God, I can't believe I wear these. That is the first pile. 
And then the other pile is, I'm going to give you a little bit of an out. This little pile is, I'll wear these once more and then I will assess. I want you to throw out that unquestionably bad pile immediately. Don't think another second about it. You take that horrible pile and get rid of them. Then I'm going to give you a little bit of time to think about this other pile. A little assessment. One point each with three questions. Here they are. One, do I feel good when I wear them? Two, do my clothes look good when I wear them? And three, does this pair of undies reflect how amazing I am? Now, I'm not talking about them not having holes or having bad lycra or a ripped crotch or even weird stains. I just want you to think about, does this pair of underwear reflect how amazing you are? Now, if the questionable pair doesn't get three out of three, I want you to consider throwing them out. And if you hesitate, you need to ask yourself why. Really understand your reasons. You can do what you want. I'm not going to check out exactly what you did with this little exercise. There are no hidden cameras in your bedroom as you're checking out your underwear drawer, but you have to like your reasons. So be really honest with yourself about your reasons why you would keep something that doesn't reflect how amazing you are. I would love for you guys to send me a quick email with the number of panties that you are able to throw out. Okay. My email is Susie. S-U-Z-Y at womeninthemiddlepodcast.com. I'm going to keep track of, of what I'm calling an important movement to take care of ourselves better. Midlife is really all about opportunity. That's how I see it. I love the idea of regret proofing from the outside in as well as the inside out. That's it for this episode. Thanks so much for joining me on this amazing ride. Being a woman in the middle is the best place to be. If you enjoyed this podcast, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. I would love to hear what you thought, too, so how about leaving me a review on iTunes? I know it's a bit of extra effort, but there's a reward. First, you'll know deep in your heart that you made this midlife gal smile. Also, I'll be doing a draw over the next few weeks for 10 lucky reviewers to win a free hour of coaching. Just go to womeninthemiddlepodcast.com forward slash iTunes for totally simple instructions for how to leave your iTunes review. And good luck. You might be the lucky winner of some free coaching. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks for listening to this episode of Women in the Middle. If you liked what you heard and want more, head over to womeninthemiddlepodcast.com slash guide to download a free actionable guide that will help you break out of your midlife funk and start living the life you want. Music